Good morning, Kurt. So good to see you on this fine, beautiful morning in September. A uh, little, uh, li- little more crisp th- this morning than, than it has been. Feels pretty good. Looks beautiful. What a couple of beautiful days we've had and uh, thankful for that. I have to admit I'll miss the warm weather though, but, but it is nice. It's very, very refreshing, uh, the temperatures that we have right now. So thankful to see you, thankful to have you here with us, uh, joining us online. A uh, couple of announcements uh, this morning. One of them's walking in the door right now. On uh, September 23rd, our dear friend Miss Smith is not going to be Miss Smith any longer on the 23rd. She and Seth are getting married. I am blessed and honored to uh, be participating in that. And... Uh, so very excited about that. We'll be, we'll be talking. We're going to talk. And uh, very excited about that. Uh, so um, you are all invited to that. Uh, if you need inf- more information, uh, let the, the Smith family know. They'll let you know. I know it's uh, over in, uh, near Madison, and it's going to be a great time. And uh, so proud of her and Seth for making this commitment. Uh, in the culture that we live in, not a lot, not a lot of kids uh, think that's necessary. So I'm very proud of them for that. Uh, September 13th, darn, that's close, isn't it? Uh, so uh, this week, this Wednesday night, we have a board meeting here at church. I'll be doing Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff from right here in the sanctuary, and then immediately following that, about 6:30 or so, we'll have our uh, board meeting down there to uh, talk and pray about the, the business of the church and, and how things are going and maybe future plans and things like that. And uh, on September 24th, when she's a married lady, uh, we are going to have a, a fellowship uh, lunch, a potluck lunch, right after our worship service. So um, if you'll uh, bring a, a side and uh, we'll have drinks, and we'll, I think we'll probably do chicken uh, uh, that day. Uh, that seems to be an easy, easy thing to do, and, uh, and um, I think that'll be really, really good that day. We've not had one in a little while. It'll be good just to sit down and have a meal together and fellowship together after we worship that day. So September 24th, put that on your calendar. Any other announcements this morning? Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I won't be here on the 24th because I'm going to a gender reveal. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here. Lord Jesus, we just love gathering as the body. We've, out, we've been out this week being hands and feet. And Father God, it's so nice when we get together every week together. Lord Jesus, and we we have the opportunity to worship you, to thank you. Lord Jesus, just to praise you for all that you do and who you are. Father God, how you make our lives so spectacular and special, Father God. Lord Jesus, you're so good. You love us and you're always faithful. Father God, I just pray and hope that you find us faithful, Lord. Lord, just uh, accept our gift today. This is our gift to you, Lord. Um, maybe some of the world gets it kind of backwards that they think that that we come to church for us, but really we come to church for you, Father God, to give you our gift of of our praise and our worship. So, Father God, accept our gift today. And, Father God, thank you for abiding with us, being with us, gathering here with us, and, Lord Jesus, just filling us with your presence. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you in your holy name. Amen. Let's stand and sing.
worship your holy name. Amen. Do we have praises, prayer requests, updates this fine morning? I know one, because I heard it right before we got started. Uh, Miss Midge texted Miss Pam uh, early the, earlier today and said that she's having those same heart issues. And so she was on the way to the hospital. So please keep Miss Midge in your prayers that they have finally be able to find an answer to that and what they need to do uh, about that for Miss Midge. Uh, so uh, just keep, keep her uh, in your prayers if you would. Tina? Cameron's friend James, who had the intestinal issue, is out of UofL, but he's at um, Fraser. Fraser and, Rehab. Yeah, Fraser Rehab. And he's got an ostomy, and he's on dialysis, and he's going through all kinds of um, therapies and physical therapies and occupational therapies and every therapy imaginable. Mm. But he is slowly getting better. Wow, so praise the Lord. The yeah. Yeah, so pray that he's able to come off of the dialysis and and uh, things like that and continue to improve and heal and uh, so keep Miss, Mr. James in your in your continued prayers. Brooke? Yeah, will you keep my friend that had the, has uh, bladder cancer in your prayers? He's um, had his surgery. Um, he's at home recovery. Uh, it's going to going to be a long recovery process and it's going to keep struggling, struggling a little bit with the after effects and mm -hmm. what his life is going to look like after this. So mm -hmm. I'm able to keep him in your prayers. Absolutely. Appreciate. Absolutely. Any other praises, prayer requests this morning? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I know there are probably more, but you're like me. I'm nothing. There's just nothing there. I know there's lots and lots of reasons for, for prayer. And uh, so just uh, continue to pray for the things you know to know to pray about. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, you know, sometimes we do draw blanks, so to speak. And But we know, we know there's people. I, I know we need to continue to, to pray for Scott and Sherry Pack and that family, um, Matt, uh, Rose's uh, sister and brother-in-law, my, my, my sister and brother in Christ, Scott and Sherry, as they've been taking care of caretakers for Scott's mom, Regina, who's uh, within possibly days. Uh, under she's under hospice care and uh, I spoke with him yesterday and and uh, they seem to think it's just a matter of a day or two and Father God just be with them because there's a lot you're just flooded with emotions uh, right now Father God as your mom is lying there and you're you're just waiting for the time to come she's a believer we're totally convinced she's going to heaven that that is so much peace in that Father God but Father, the Lord Jesus, it's still that 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 your flesh still grieves and your your spirit still mourns. And Father God, so I pray for Scott and Sherry and that entire family and Stacy, uh, his brother, and and so many other people that love Regina and are going to be affected uh, by her passing. But Father God, I'm I'm just glad I know that I have assurance, Father God. <laughs> that she says she loves the Lord and she's ready to go see him face to face. So thankful for that. There's just so much encouragement, hope, and peace in hearing that come out of someone's mouth. So Father God, Lord Jesus, we pray over that situation. Lord, just uh, be with us all. Be uh, with us. several folks we, we mentioned this morning who are recovering and going through a lot. Lord, we pray continue healing in those situations, complete continued comfort. And Father God, there's a lot of adjustments to be made, uh, lifestyle adjustments, living adjustments, Father God, when you have such serious issues. Father God, we lift, lift up Miss Mitch to you right now, where she's at. Father God, we pray over her heart. Touch it. Bring it into rhythm. 
Father God, Lord Jesus, if, if you mean for doctors to take care of it, Father God, give them discernment, what to do, what it is, what will help it. But Father God, we pray over Miss Midge and her health right now. Right now, Lord Jesus, we pray you touch her, Lord Jesus, and, and give doctors discernment what to do. Or if you so choose and it's your will, just heal her. Heal her right now, Lord Jesus, in your name and by your blood, Father God. Lord Jesus, we have so many people around us that need you, that need you one way or another, spiritually, physically, emotionally, Father God. Lord Jesus, we lift them up in prayer right now, Lord Father God. We praise you and thank you for all things and everything. You're so good. You're so amazing. We love you so much. Thank you for the hundreds, thousands of answered prayers we've seen in our time here, Father God. Lord Jesus, thank you for this family of believers, this body. Father God, Lord Jesus, continue to give us opportunities, Lord to reach out, to help, to impact. Thank you for the carload of food that we took at the help center this week. Miss Rose dropped it off on Wednesday. And Father God, thank you that that's going to feed bellies that are hungry. But even more than that, it's a testament that we're reaching out to care, that we love people. We don't want, we don't want the children and the elderly of Henry County to go to bed with an empty belly, Lord Jesus. So, Father God, we pray that it goes where it needs to go and it's used the way it need, needs to be used. And, that, Father God, once again, I thank you for our opportunities to help. Thank you, Lord, that you choose us like you did 12 disciples and you use us, even us, Father God, to help change the world. In your precious, holy, mighty, and amazing name we pray. Amen. Our communion song uh, today is number 190. Not to sound redundant, but one of my favorites. <laughs> let's, uh, let's sing this great song of our hate, fate uh, before we have our time of communion. Oh, Jesus. 
come to you now in remembrance of the sacrifice that was made on Calvary. Lord, we pray that you would help us, Father, to always remember, Father, the blood that was shed, the body that was abused and, and, and cut and hurt, Father, for our sake. And Father, we pray, Lord, that uh, we accept that sacrifice, Father, and uh, that we will spend our eternity in heaven with you because of that sacrifice. And we just give you glory and praise, Lord, for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. day that the Lord has made. Amen. So uh, anybody ever planned a trip to go somewhere you've never been before and gotten really excited about it? I mean, really excited. Maybe, maybe someone, you've heard people talk about this place. Or maybe it's always been a childhood dream. You know, maybe uh, I'll, I'll say a place I've never been that I've always wanted to go. I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. Not, I've not been to Hawaii. I'd love to go to Hawaii. But I remember, you know, and maybe you do too, times in your lives when you've gone somewhere that you've always wanted to go, you were so excited about it, and maybe you got there and it just didn't quite live up to the hype. But maybe, just maybe you went there and it was just amazing. It, it was beyond uh, anything you could have ever imagined. Have you ever done that? Have you ever had that, that kind of trip 
that just blew you away. And sometimes it's even unexpected places. I remember a few years ago, Rose and I, we had tickets to a concert in Tennessee in the middle of nowhere. But it was in a cave. I don't know if you, if any of you watch KET, but there's there's a bluegrass and country show uh, called Underground Music Underground, and it takes place in this cave in Tennessee. And I mean, it is out there. It's between Nashville and Ten- and and Chattanooga. There's not much there, but. We went there for this concert. We stayed in a nice little hotel, and there was a nice little town there called Manchester, Tennessee. So we went, and of course, we went to a local restaurant, and they were just as sweet as could be. And uh, so we had a, a, a long day the next day before the concert, and so we asked, what is there to see? And so the the waitress at the restaurant said, well, you got to go see the Old Stone Inn. We're like, okay, that sounds great. She she said, oh, it's a state park. It's beautiful. You'll love it. Okay, so what would you think of if somebody said Old Stone End? Old Stone End. You'd think like a uh, maybe a frontier uh, era inn hotel, right? No, that's not what it was. So anyway, uh, of course, the Indians didn't name it. Uh, 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 the Americans did. But anyway, it's an Indian burial ground in near Manchester, uh, Tennessee, and it's fascinating. They have a welcome center and a museum, and it tells you all about their processes and how many you know, cubic feet of rock and earth it took to build this big thing. But there was a burial ground, but it was also a ritual plane. And this thing was humongous, but they had built earthen walls all the way around it. They had taken rock, covered it with, with dirt, and there was passageways underneath it where, that, where they buried the leaders and, of the village and everything. And it, it was uh, mind-boggling for the time. It's kind of like the pyramids or some of the things you're like, how? How without the technology did they build these things? Now, how did they do this? That was fascinating. That was incredible. But there was a river that went all the way around it. So it was strategically placed. This river came in on this side and all the way around this side. And it had waterfalls ever so often. I'm not talking little bitty waterfalls either. But Rose and I took our shoes off and... And we got in that water and we played. We played like kids in that water and it was stunning. It was so beautiful there. It was a complete surprise on the Duck River there in Tennessee. I urge you, if you ever get a chance to go to Manchester, Tennessee, go. It's actually Old Stone Fort, I said in. The Old Stone Fort State Park in Manchester, Tennessee and if you don't believe in heaven, you might after you go there. Go there on a nice day when you can wade in the water and let a we. You, there was a couple of places you could just stand and the waterfall would come down over. It's phenomenal. But see, that's what God does. God gives us opportunities to have our minds blown by His creation and His beauty. And I love that about my God. So many things that maybe other people might walk by and not see, we as believers might be totally blown away by it because of his creativity and his beauty throughout all of creation. I mean, my goodness, folks, we live in Henry County. All you have to do is drive down the road and you see beauty all around you. It's beautiful. Kentucky is such a beautiful place. The world is a beautiful place. I love it. So uh, last week, we sang a bunch of songs about heaven, didn't we? When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. We, we, we sang about heaven. I wanted that to be a kickoff for what we're going to talk about today. Wednesday night, I talked about heaven. What, what's the big deal anyway? What's so special about heaven? We as believers need to know. And we need to live it out in our lives. And if anything, we should look at it as something to look forward to. 
something to be excited about. So I wanted us to start with uh, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, beginning with verse 1. These are encouraging, powerful, beautiful words of Jesus in John 14, beginning with verse 1, that probably we all know, we've all heard, but I think we need to take time and really ingest what Jesus is saying to us in this. To me, this is a mind blower. This is a profound statement. This isn't just saying, I'll be with you, I'll protect you, I'll help you, I'll be there for you no matter what. This goes far beyond that kind of promise from Jesus, which he makes all those promises and he keeps all those promises. So why wouldn't we be excited about this promise from Jesus. Listen to this. This is powerful. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't worry. Don't be troubled. Don't let life get you so down that you forget about what he promises us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you or I would have told you. I am going there, listen to this. I am going there to prepare a place for you. He's talking to all of us. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. He's the way. Didn't he say that? I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. So we know the way to heaven, and it's through him, and he's the only way. He's the only way there. And he said he will escort us there, he will take us there, and it will be prepared, and it'll be ready for you when you get there. And so much like that time you've gone on a trip and your mind's been blown, it's even been far better than you could have imagined or thought. Heaven's going to be that way too. Now flip with me over to Revelation 21.4. Why should we be excited about heaven? Why should we be looking forward to it? Well, I'm going to tell you. Because the Bible tells us. Revelation 21 verse 4. And really, we could read this whole, this whole chapter. It's, it's amazing. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Doesn't that sound like a place you'd want to go? Isn't that kind of what we're looking for when we go on vacation? A place to make us stop thinking about what happens in this life, about maybe the people that have already gone on before. You know, Rose and I had this talk yesterday. Some people can just not give up grieving. They become trapped in it, and they can't get past it. They just, they just can't. They won't ask the Lord to help them with it. So they just bury themselves in a, their own grave, so to speak, with grief and mourning. But what about heaven? What makes it so special? Maybe it's really difficult for us to comprehend the concept of a place where there's no more death, there's no more mourning, there's no more tears, no more hurt, no more pain, no more suffering, no more hunger, no more thirst, no more of the things that keep us from being content and peaceful all the time. But that's exactly what God is promising us. And it's already prepared for us. How incredible is that? So... I was curious. I was curious. So I went on the World Wide Web and I looked up some quotes about heaven and, and there's hundreds, thousands of them besides the Bible, quotes about heaven. Some of them you would agree with, some of them maybe not. 
But I wanted to pass along a few of these quotes that I've read about heaven. This world, I'm sorry, has this world been so kind to you that you should leave it with regret? There are better things ahead than any we leave behind. Anybody know who said that? C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis. It's one of my favorite ones, by the way. Has this world been so kind to you that you should leave it with regret? There are better things ahead than any we leave behind. It's a lot of good stuff. Family, friends, memories. You know, maybe you have your favorite place, the, the beach or the woods or the lake or the mountains or whatever that happens to be. You know, birthday parties and, and presents and meals and food and uh, great things, right? You have your things that you love about this existence, about this life. And here in America, more typically than most places in the world, we have more of that than almost anywhere else on the planet. We are blessed. We are blessed beyond measure. Why, but why would we regret leaving it with the promises of heaven? Well, over the next week or two, I want us to explore what is the big deal, what's so special about heaven. You might know who said this, my home is in heaven, I'm just traveling through this world. Billy Graham, Billy Graham, I, my home is in heaven. I'm just, tra I'm just traveling through. This is not my home. This one's really good. This is a recent one, or relatively recent. We may speak about a place where there are no tears, no death, no fear, no night, but those things are just a benefit of heaven. The beauty of heaven is seeing God. I love that. Max Lucado. Max Lucado. Those are just benefits of heaven. The beauty of heaven is seeing God. Now this one might surprise you who said this. We ought to fly away from earth to heaven as quickly as we can. And to fly away is to become like God as far as this is in, as possible. And to become like him is to become holy, just, and wise. Anybody have any clue who might have said that? Plato. Plato said that. So I, I, I love that. I think that's on point for sure. The way I'm looking at this and the way I want us to look at this uh, through this series we ought to fly away from earth to heaven as quickly as we can and to fly away is to become like God as far as this is possible and to become like him is to become holy, just, and wise. Plato was a pretty smart fellow, wasn't he? I could go on for days and days with marvelous quotes like this. I couldn't believe it as I went down the page. I scrolled down and read and you know, to have to pick a few, a few, was difficult because there were so many good ones. There were some that, that were not very good, but we won't, we won't share those because that, that's just in pit, pit people's opinions. But we could go on for days talking about what people here on earth say about heaven. And so many gifted and intellectual and intelligent people have given their thoughts about heaven, but there's only one source that can tell us about heaven from experience. And that's the Lord our God. He's the only one who can really, really tell us about heaven. And he does. That's what I love about the Bible. He gives us scripture. And he gives us clues. And he gives us news. And he gives us ideas about the place that he has created and is creating for us to come to at the end of this temporary existence. And that's our number one thing we need to remember. This existence is temporary. No one escapes God's plan when it comes to life and death. He planned it this way. We should be okay with it. 
We should be more than okay with it. This is a temporary existence, but what he promises us on that other side is so worth it. It's so worth it to pursue it. It will be a place far beyond our imaginations, a place where we will have true and complete peace. The very first thing that we need to realize and reach for is to have a certain attitude about heaven. A, I think we as believers need to think about it more. I think it needs to be something that's on our minds, that we think about, that we think about, I don't know about you, my mom and dad have been gone for a while and sometimes I just need to speak to them. And I speak to them in heaven. And usually I'll ask God, may I have permission to talk to my mom and dad. He's my father. God's my father. Don't get me wrong. I don't put my mother and father above him. Not at all. But sometimes, sometimes I just feel like I need to say hi. Happy birthday, dad. Happy birthday, mom. Thinking about you and missing you today. So we have an a attitude about heaven. I spoke about this some on, on this week's Wednesday night with Pastor Jeff. Check it out if you missed it. Uh, as I talked about heaven, we should store up treasure in heaven. The Bible tells us that. What's that mean? Well, that means as we live, we should think about heavenly things. We should do things for the kingdom, for ourselves, for our families, for complete strangers, for the saved and the unsaved. We need to store up treasures in heaven because guess what? The earthly stuff that we gain, that we gather, the stuff that just ends up in our closets, it'll all be gone when you take your last breath. There ain't nothing you can do about it either. The best you can hope for is maybe your kids or grandkids might take it and use it, and they may not. It doesn't mean anything in the scheme of eternity. Store up treasures in heaven. Be willing. I know this, this is so un-American. This is so unlike us. But if you have to, sacrifice everything to get there. If you have to, sacrifice everything to get to heaven. And you may have to. Some people have. Read your Bible. Watch the news. Believers are still persecuted and murdered all over the world. Even here in America. It happens. They like, people like to keep it hush-hush, but it's true. Persecution has never stopped. It's never even slowed down. So we need to store up treasure there. We need to sacrifice everything to get there. We should long for it. It's not a death wish to long for heaven. Okay? It's just not. It's being excited about God's plan and trusting him and having faith that what he says is true. We should long for it. When the world mistreats us, when the world makes us feel less than, we should turn it around and go, yeah, but I got the coolest guy and he's made the most awesome promise to me I don't have to worry about what I have or don't have here because what he's promised me there we should eagerly look forward to it we should hope for it and we need to admit to ourselves and live out our lives trusting that in spirit we're already there does the Bible not tell us that once we ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, that he instills the Holy Spirit in us, which is sent from heaven? So, A, there's part of heaven in you already as a believer in Christ. Two, he says you become citizens of heaven when you choose to follow me. In spirit, we're already there we already have a ticket i love that 
Word, God's word is, uh, oh, I'll I, I make sure I don't leave something out because this is really, really important. So listen to Ephesians 2, 6. And this, this is a scripture that, that drives home the point I just made. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. When God imparts the Holy Spirit into us as believers and followers, that's when we gain citizenship into heaven. Now, I love that because most gods that you hear about, most gods that you read about, they don't want you anywhere near them. You are just continue to be a subject. No. Look, did you hear what that said? He seats you beside him. He puts you with him as an inheritance, an heir of the kingdom of God right there like you're his brother or sister. There's a reason that the church has called each other brothers and sisters for eons, for ages, we've called each other brothers and sisters because this scripture says that Jesus puts us right up there with, uh, with him like a brother or a sister, an equal heir in the inheritance of the kingdom of God. I think that's an incredible, incredible promise that we need to remember. God's word's really specific when it tells us the requirements for entering heaven. Okay, so what our spiritual passport should look like. What should our spiritual passport look like? A couple of weeks ago in our Are You Sure series, we talked several times that we must be chosen and called by the Lord. And from those scriptures, we know that we are chosen. We are called. We just need to accept to join God in heaven. As his children and heirs to his kingdom, we can join him. It is a place that he's created and prepared for you and for me. All we have to do is humbly accept that gracious invitation that he's given us. That's what you need stamped on your passport to heaven. Also, the Bible makes it very clear that there has to be a transformation in our lives. Not just one single act, not one simple decision. That's how it starts. That's how it begins. As we say, okay, Lord, I don't, I don't understand all this. I don't really get all this, but I know I need you. And I choose today, I choose right now to follow you. I want you in my life. I want to follow you. I want to learn more. I want to be baptized into your kingdom. I, wa I want you. We need to have transformation. The Bible over and over makes it very clear. There has to be a clear moment, of course, when we surrender our past and our present and our future to him and surrender to his will in our lives. The scripture often refers to this as being born again. So we are born again. And I love it uh, when Jesus tells a completely mind-blown Nicodemus about being born again. Poor Nicodemus. I would have been the same way. When he said this to me, I would have, I'm sure I would have looked at him like a deer in the headlights. And, and uh, you can find this in John uh, chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. This, uh, what Jesus t tells to Nicodemus. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. This is great news for all of us. This is great news that he gives us this incredible opportunity. Whether you're five years old or 95 years old, he gives us all this opportunity to be born again. What does that even mean? It's a restart. In golf, it's a mulligan, a reboot, a restart. He gives us this incredible opportunity to start over. He's built into his very system a start over button. He gives us a fresh start. 
that has unlimited benefits and the most incredible benefit of all of being born again is spending eternity with him in heaven. I've asked you this before. What's your definition of a long life? We went to a family, uh, a birthday party yesterday uh, for a family that Rose has been friends with since she was 12 years old. And the, the patriarch of the family, Dave, turned 90 years old yesterday. And guess what? They had, a, they had some games you could play. You know, what's older than Dave? <laughs> You know, and it was amazing the things that Dave is older than. You know, Dave, Dave at 90 years old is older than a lot of stuff that we've had around our entire lives. And it's pretty fascinating. So it's 90 years, 90 years. Where, and, and it was funny because they, they cut his birthday cake and they had a little toothpick with a picture of Dave on it with a birthday hat that said happy 90th on it. And me and the guy next to me were like, wow, you're really old when they use your 75th birthday picture for your 90th and you look young okay so what's your definition of a long life 90 years that sounds like a pretty long time 95 97 100 105 sounds like an auction you know, we can go we can go up but it, it, it realistically think about your time here even if you live to be 100 years old, which I think is kind of the gold standard for old age, if you live a long life of 100 years and you know, you're know you in relatively good health, man, Dave and his wife yesterday, you, you, would, you just wouldn't know. They're, they're so uh, alert and happy and especially her, she, could like, she looked like she could have, could have danced the jitterbug yesterday. Uh, she's just so full of energy and life, and, and I love that. But compared to what God promises us with him, he says it's like a flower of the field. It's like a, a wind that just passes through a field. It's so brief. A hundred years is so short compared to what he promises us. Over time, as our faith builds, we must learn to trust God. And we must learn to trust Jesus. Trust that they've, been, they've added our name to the Lamb's Book of Life. You know what that is, right? That's a book that has the names of the citizens of heaven. The Lamb's Book of Life. And you better hope when that last breath happens, that last heartbeat happens, that your name's already written there. Wouldn't you want that guarantee? I think you do want that guarantee that your name's in that book where the names of the citizens of heaven have been recorded. The highs and the lows of living this life will help us learn and grow in our faith, in being righteous in the eyes of the Lord, as we learn to be holy in our behavior and our thoughts. And endlessly, we should be endlessly pursuing the will of God in everything. Every aspect of our lives, we should be thinking, is God good with this? Am I doing what God wants me to do? To learn humility. And maybe one of the most important skill that we learn as believers and followers of Jesus in this life especially, is to become overcomers. You see, this doesn't make us weak. Our faith doesn't make us pushovers. The Bible tells us that our faith makes us more than conquerors, mm -hmm. victorious, and overcomers. Hear what Re Revelation 2, 7 says about being an overcomer. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That's us. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Have you heard about the tree of life before? 
Yeah, we've heard. We've heard about the tree of life before. That's the one place that God said, you can have the fruit from anywhere else in the garden, but leave this one alone because it contains the knowledge of good and evil. I don't, I don't want you to know that. You don't need to know that right now. I want to tell you how good God is today. In God's plan, he's going to complete the circle of his plan. And I'm going to tell you how he's going to do that. He's going to restore us to the garden the way he intended it to be. And the way he wanted us to be. He's going to restore that garden through the new heaven. His paradise. And we'll finally, listen, we'll finally be able to eat from the tree of life. Because he's going to give us knowledge that we don't need here on earth. You see, he planned this. He knew it. And he wanted to make sure he kept all his promises. So the garden will be there. The tree of life will be there. But as citizens of heavens, we won't have the same restrictions as we do as human beings. That's how good God is. He's going to give us access we've never had before. We'll inherit and live in eternity with a God who knew we all need second chances to reach paradise with him. That's how good God is. In the beginning, there was the tree of life. And in our new beginning, we will be blessed to enjoy the tree of life just as God planned it. I want to share something, some really good news about this heaven thing. If you could wish yourself a new body, one that didn't have any aches or pains or flaws or blemishes, I have great news for you. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 15, 42 through 44 says. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is sown in dishonor, but listen to this. It is raised in glory. These bodies that are wearing out as we get older, or we have problems, we have things that happen to our bodies as we grow over. Maybe some of the things you were born with, that you've lived your whole life with, he's going to take away. The perishable will be raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. Sown in in weakness, but it's raised in power. It is sown a natural body, but then it is raised a spiritual body that will never die, that will be glorified, that will glow in the dark because of the glory of God that's within you. I want you to know more about this, so I encourage you, I urge you, read the rest of this chapter, okay? 1 Corinthians 15. Read that whole chapter if you want to get really, really uh, juiced up about God's promises. So next week we're going to go even further into our talk about heaven and just exactly why it's such a big deal, why it's so special, and why we should be looking forward to it. God has given us such amazing glimpses of heaven in our lives. You ever held a newborn baby? Moms, when they take that baby out and lay it on your belly, on your chest, you hold that newborn baby, glimpse of heaven. It's a glimpse of heaven. It's a beautiful, beautiful feeling. There's so many. Sometimes during a sunset or a sunrise, glimpses of heaven standing up at the top of a mountain, seeing as far as you could see, glimpse of heaven. Waking up with your spouse next to you, glimpse of heaven. Knowing your mom or dad 
that is in heaven already. A glimpse of heaven. Loved ones that have gone on before us. When you read something in the Bible and you go, that's me, that's me. God's talking to me. Glimpse of heaven. That's how good God is. That's how good he is. God has given us so many glimpses of heaven in our lives, and we'll talk more about that next Sunday. Meanwhile, keep your mind on things above. I want us, that's, I feel like that's what God has wanted me to do over the last few weeks, for us to get to where we're thinking more about heaven than about the troubles of earth. We, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we think more about heaven than the problems of earth? And you'll have a peace. When you're thinking about heaven, it's just peaceful. It's a peace unlike any other, a peace that comes from heaven. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you for the glimpses of heaven. And thank you for the promises that those glimpses don't even barely compare with what it will really be like. Lord Jesus, continue to give us hope and promises and glimpses of heaven. Maybe just a little bit more sometimes. You know what we need. You know what we need to feel. Father God, Lord Jesus, just help us to be open to it. Father God, that was, we look forward. And Lord Jesus, I just hope and pray that everyone in this room, everyone watching this, can remember, I said it on Wednesday, that eternity is a reward for a life well lived, glorifying and following Jesus, our good Lord God. Lord Jesus, we just pray, pray that when it comes down to it, we'll know we've lived a good life for you and that we know what our reward is, that you've prepared a place for each and every one of us special just for us. Thank you, Father God. Lord Jesus, we just pray over everybody on our prayer list, everything folks are going through. Lord Jesus, we pray for the lost and the unsaved more than anything. Father God, those that are just trampling through life on their way to hell, Father God, let them be enlightened. Let them fall on their knees say, God, I just can't live like this anymore. I need you. Lord Jesus, as we sing our last song, Father God, anyone who's hearing this, anyone here who needs to complete that promise of God by saying, Lord, I'll follow you. I need to know more. Father God, let them do that right here today. Just confess that you need him. You need him real bad in life. And Father God, some folks may just need to reestablish. Maybe they've wandered off the path a little bit. They need to be redirected. Father God, you do that too. All we need to do is ask. Lord Jesus, help us to stay on that beautiful path, that narrow path that leads to your heavenly world, Lord Jesus, that you promise us. Your precious holy, amazing, incredible, wonderful, awesome name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn today is the very reason why we should do all this. Number 169, because he lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he
bless y'all. See you real soon. God bless you.